Uh, I went ahead and filled in these side uh, parts of the opening to match the spinner shape. And what I did here was a kind of a combination. I tried using straight Bondo. And to fill that much with Bondo and get the shape right, it was really difficult to, to really sculpt it. So I used uh, some modeler's clay or some sculpting clay to get the shape I really wanted as far as these round corners. And then went over it again with Bondo. And I still wasn't happy with it structurally because it was going to, as that clay dried, it kept breaking off. So I went in and laid up some fiberglass over the top of it to give it a strong shape. Got a little bit of sanding to do to finish that off. And uh, so I did that on both sides and that worked out pretty good. Uh, I also did the same thing down here on these corners. Uh, added some fiberglass to these to give it more structural strength. Um, now what I'm doing, I noticed that for whatever reason, um, this cowling was damaged and it was damaged through this section right here and right in here um, when it was damaged uh, I didn't really do a whole lot to repair it other than kind of pop everything back in place and sand it but what happened was it kind of pushed the cowling in a little bit which is is uh, surprising because it is fiberglass but if you can look I don't know if you can tell from here or not but if you look down the cowling I'm gonna come up right here this corner is lower than this corner maybe show up from the other side just drops off enough that it's not right <laughs> so you can see this this corner is high and this corner is low so that, that opening's a little off kilter so um i can't leave it that way just i don't want it to look funny so i need to carry this line out a little higher and raise this whole area here and then blend that into the line so there's going to be some body work that i need to do to fix that right here and until that's done I can't do the layup. So I went back and forth on whether to do anything about it. It fits fine on the aircraft, but that drop off right there, it just doesn't look right. And uh, I'm not happy with that. So I'll rework this corner and get it till it uh, looks correct. And then uh, it'll be ready for the carbon. You notice I did take it off the airplane. Um, that was kind of a chore because all that foam I poured down inside kind of locked in around the exhaust and everything. So it was kind of a an effort to get it off but I think I've changed my mind about um, doing the layup on the air on the airframe because as you wrap the carbon underneath you know gravity is going to want to pull it out away and I don't know how well it's going to adhere or during the drying process so instead I'm going to put it up on end like this and I'm going to wrap it and uh, see how that goes you know it, it, it is pretty structurally stiff now with all three pieces together. So I don't think I'll have an issue with that. And then, uh, and if I can't get it off the plug, then I'll go ahead and divide the pieces up um, with it on here. Go ahead and cut the outer shell of the carbon and uh, go from there. All right guys, so update here on fixing this body line. So I went ahead and raised this corner up and now you can probably see that the body lines match up now with the rest of the cow. So, you know, this dropped off quite a bit before. So by raising this corner, it made this body line dip. So I had to build this up. So that's what I'm doing right now is building that up and trying to get it to match the other side. And what I did there is I used this, this tool. It's basically for doing matching, uh, you know, molding or whatever, but I lined it up so it match you know, I, I, I basically marked the curvature of that side and then you can flip it and then I'll match the curvature on the other side. So that's why I'm building it up a little bit with Bondo right there. Now keep in mind, this is not how you would do it if this is your final cowling because you're adding all this weight to it. You'd want to shape it with foam and super fill. Keep it light and do it that way. Bondo's cheap. It's easy to put on and it dries fast and you can shape it. If I was doing this with super fill, I'd have to put the super fill on and wait 12 hours. So the bondo is just to get the shape, and this thing, whole thing will be wrapped in carbon. So i got a couple more passes on this, probably maybe one or two more fine coats of bondo to fix the low spots once it's all done. And then I'll be much happier with this being uh, more symmetrical. And then I'll uh, finish sand it, and we'll get ready to wrap it in carbon. So... You know, some, some of you guys might have said, why bother? It fits. You don't worry about it. 
no one will notice. Well, I noticed, and it no if I noticed it, I will always know about it. And I don't really want anything on this plane to be that way. I don't want anything to be like, I hope no one notices I did that wrong or did that, didn't fix that right. Or I want to be really proud of this because I'm spending so much time with the detail stuff that I really want this plane to be, in my mind anyways, perfect. So if it costs me a day, a day to do this, um, it's worth it to me so that I don't have something on the plane that I'm not happy with. So went ahead and wet sanded this down to 400 grit and cleaned it up real good. Fixing this makes me so much happier. Um, it's totally symmetrical now. As you can see, right up, totally level. Got the body lines matching. There's a couple little teeny low spots that I'm not gonna worry about because doing the overlay of the carbon, they're not gonna show. So it's ready for the carbon as far as I'm concerned. So I gotta set up a station and for the carbon for uh, wetting up the fabric and everything. So I have plenty of room to work because right now the shop's just not set up for it, so. All right guys, thanks for all the comments on the last video of the cowling part one. Um, I really appreciate all the viewership lately. You guys have been really, uh, Staying up on all the videos. I've been trying to put them out once a week and uh, been doing a lot of work on this. So I have had a lot of content and uh, hopefully we'll get through this uh, second part of the cowling where we have an end product that's ready for paint. Um, I want to address a couple of comments you guys had. Uh, first off, the suggestions of, of wrapping the whole cowling with tape. Uh, something I had thought about doing. Uh, was probably not going to do it until I heard how many people suggested it and uh, and why. So I did. So I had, went ahead and wrapped this whole thing with packing tape. I got to do this section right here still, but it it was uh, it's actually came up pretty good. It's really hard to get the packing tape since it doesn't flex on a curved surface without getting little uh, wrinkles in it. So it took a while to do that, but it's done now, almost. Uh, the other issue that was kind of I had more than one person ask about it is why I'm doing this the way I'm doing it. Um, you know, a professional or manufacturer way of doing this would be, this would be the plug. Now we'd make a mold and that mold would then be uh, used to reproduce this exact shape. And that's absolutely true. Um, there's a couple reasons that I don't want to do it that way. One, uh, is the time to make the mold would cost me another week. The expense of making a, a correctly uh, reproducible mold, a proper mold, would be um, close to five to five hundred to a thousand dollars, not including your labor in there. So there would be quite a bit in materials there, especially if you get the right materials, which I did not do when I made the airbox uh, plug and mold. And having that experience and having it fail has also pushed me towards doing it this way. So in order to do a mold, you'd have to divide this up into the, probably the three pieces that you want. You'd have the boot cowl, the top cowl, and the bottom cowl. And then you'd lay those up separately. So you'd have a mold for each. So you'd end up with three different molds. I suppose there is a way you could make this as one mold where you're reaching down inside and you could lay the whole thing up as one piece. I'm sure you could do that. Um, it, it's pretty deep, but I'm sure that could be done. I think the way that usually they're done is the three piece method. Like when you get the cowling from the factory, you have three different pieces and you set them all together and the finished edges are really rough. Some of them are actually purposely longer than they need to be. So you, you can, you can uh, adjust it on your airframe. Then you have to work those lines to get that seam right on all three pieces. That's extra time that I could take that time of fitting those three pieces together and work the outer portion of the way I'm doing it to finish off the body work because um, it's not gonna be that clear gloss finish on the outside, it's just gonna be carbon. So going over that with some uh, micro or some filler and sanding it down and getting it ready for paint would be about as much time as probably fitting the three pieces together. So you would add the time of making the mold. Now, if I was gonna reproduce these and make them available for sale, the mold would be a better option. Um, I don't have near enough time to get into the carbon business. Um, I don't wanna reproduce these. Um, 
I just don't have. I've got a full-time job. I got to finish this build. I've got a business I run. I've got the kids and uh, the family stuff going on. And then a lot of maintenance on the home that I haven't done for two years because I've been building this. So getting into making carbon cowlings is not on my list of things to do. Now, if there was a lot of interest in it, it doesn't mean I wouldn't take this and send it to my buddy who was in the carbon business and see if he would make a mold and, and be able to reproduce them and make them available for sale. So that's just something that we, we can tackle in the future. But for me right now, I'm gonna do a one-off. I'm gonna lay it up on top of this because it's the quickest way to get the finest, final product. And I think time-wise spent on the actual product will be a lot less by doing it that way. Um, the idea to do it this way um, did come from uh, Mike Patey's build on Draco. Um, if you guys don't watch Mike Patey's YouTube channel on building Scrappy and his older ones on building Draco, there's just so much information there that would help you with, with your project. I highly recommend going to Mike's channel and watching it. Um, I also want to thank Mike. He's been real helpful. I've been asking him tons of questions lately about uh, carbon uh, supplies and stuff on how to get all of the stuff, everything I need together to do this project. So thanks, Mike. Um, but what he did was he took his cowling off of uh, Turbulence, which was one of his airplanes, and he did exactly this laid up. He taped it with a different tape because he was protecting that cowling. He was more concerned with the finish because that was going to go back on another airplane where this one isn't. But he taped it with masking tape and then went over again with aluminum tape and then waxed it and then he did the layup on the outside of it. Um, and then he used that as the starting point for a cowling for Draco. He did tons of modifications to it after that point. But having it where you do the, the layup on the outside, it's not going to be vacuum bagged. Um, it will have a peel ply on it and we'll try to get as much of the resin out as we can. But I can't vacuum bag it the way this sh the shape of this is. Um, it came out really nice on Draco. If you guys saw that plane, it was beautiful. It does require more body work to get the final smooth outer surface that's going to be painted. Now I am going to paint it. I'm going to paint it to match the fuselage. So that's another reason that this method is going to work. If I wanted that gloss finish carbon finish with the clear coat and UV protected on the clear coated carbon, then I think the mold would really be the only way to be successful with that. So. That's my thought process, um, that there's two different ways to do it, and this is the way I chose to do it, and it's mostly because of time and cost to get the final product. Watched a lot of videos, and one of the tricks I picked up is if you grab one of the threads, like this, the one I just pulled out, and you pull it out of the fabric, it creates a straight line of on the weave and then you can cut down where that voided thread is and you get a nice straight cut. All right guys, I think I'm as prepared as I can be for this layup tomorrow. So I pre-cut a lot of the pieces. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna get after this uh, first thing uh, when it's cooler, because it will give me a little bit more working time. So I got that set up, the peel ply is over there. I've got the pieces over here. I've got a bunch of supplies lying around somewhere. So I've got the spreaders, um, some scissors that are basically gonna be disposable. I'm gonna start cutting the fabric with those once the resin's on it. And I've got a bunch of boxes of gloves. The plug is all waxed. So I'm ready to get after it. Um, I'd love to do it tonight, but it's been a long day already. So it's about eight o'clock and that doesn't give me enough time to do this. So I'm gonna get up, get going on it first thing in the morning. And hopefully by the end of tomorrow, I will have a, a cowl drying and ready, uh, hopefully by the end of the weekend to pull off the plug. So a little nervous about it because this carbon fiber is kind of expensive, so, but. Also excited, so let's see how it goes.
Okay, so I'm gonna start off by saying that Randy Appling, Mike Patey, big respect to you guys for doing a lot of this because this is not not at all easy. This stuff is sticky. The time frame to work with it, you're in a rush the whole time trying to get it all perfect. And something this shape, you can't just cut a piece and lay it on there. I mean, I probably should have done a little bit better job with templates of paper and cutting out the carbon. Then I'm just cutting carbon and throwing it on there in the orientation I needed it. And then basically cutting it on the plug itself and then rearranging it. I've got pieces here and there. So, but we got about three layers. Um, I say about because somewhat areas there's in the big uh, runs are two solid layers of cross, uh, you know, crossing the thread. And then where it overlaps and in on the front, there is uh, three layers in all, a lot of the curved areas. This wouldn't look good um, queer coated at all because there seams everywhere. So, but that's okay because we're gonna paint it. Um, we started about 8.30, it's one o'clock. My wife was a huge, huge help. Um, I don't think I could do this by myself. She was basting the cloth while I was positioning in it. And then um, she was waiting on me because the first piece, man, it took forever because we came, um, I can actually say we this time because there was two of us. Came up on the bottom and up over the top and working in all these holes, this area in here, was uh it was difficult so i may when it's all done lay one more piece where i want the clear coat right across the the cone um body line if i'm gonna do that uh clear coat piece and i'll be honest the packing tape ended up being a real pain in the ass um anywhere there was a end of a tape it would lift when you're waxing it and if the wax got under it it obviously wouldn't stick back down and there's some spots that i didn't address and then when you lay the carbon it would get underneath there and it would create a bump. So I'd have to pull the carbon off, cut that piece of tape off. And so I had that do that like four or five times. And that was uh, really frustrating. Hopefully having the tape on there will help it release. So um, I don't mind being frustrated as long as it's worth it to get it off. All right, time to unwrap this present. inlets came out really nice it's a little bit of body work that will need to be done to smooth out some of that now the big question is whether or not this is going to release from them from the mold super excited about how this came out so far let's just hope we can get it off the mold <laughs> inside of this came out beautiful i'll probably put some stiffeners in there because it's pretty with that two two layers it's a little bit soft still or flexible six pounds for the whole cowling all right so this does not include the boot cow so we put the boot cow on next but Fourteen point nine pounds. Fourteen 
4.3. If we add the other one, it would be 15. That's 19.3 pounds versus 6.7. So 19.3 pounds for the uh, Model 7 cowling. Now granted, that's a little heavier than stock because of all the fiberglass work I did on it. But basically, 15 to 19 pounds, I think you would be pretty consistent. Under 7 pounds. So... Saving a good solid 10 pounds on this cowling. Now granted, I'm going to add a little bit more weight to it to beef up some areas. So let's say overall it's going to be under 10 pounds. All right, guys, by no means is this, is this a final product, but it came out pretty darn nice. I've gone over the outside one time, sanded it. Um, there's a couple spots that didn't get good coverage of the second layer, and there's some areas I want to add a third layer. And so... I'm going to be doing some reinforcement layers on the inside, um, especially all the way around the mounting points. And then for somehow, I missed putting a, a second layer all the way back here, so that's super flimsy. So I got to reinforce that. It's good here, and then real strong up where I got three layers. So um, for a first carbon project, I think it came out pretty darn good. Um, the plug, unfortunately, um, didn't come out very easily. So I did have to take it apart. So all that body work, you know, it would have to be redone in order to do another one. But parts are there. You know, the parts didn't break. I have to take all the tape off them anyways. Um, so anyways, I'll hang on to those in case I need to make another one for any, for whatever reason. So I'll be doing a lot of micro. And for those of you who don't know what micro is, it's basically just little glass balls. It's like a powder almost that you mix in with the fiberglass resin and then use that like as body filler. So some of these places where I got a little low spots because the resin's a little thicker, I can still sand down and, and try to get rid of that because that's resin on top of the carbon and get down to some of these spots where the um, peel ply didn't pull as much of the uh, of the resin out. So and then on all the seam lines, this will need to. Use, you know be smooth so that that doesn't show in the final on the final outside all right guys so i just finished doing these three inch reinforcement tapes all the way around the back side or basically the boot cow so the cowling's upside down right now so this is the windshield where it comes up to the windshield and then the sides where it's going to mount to the airframe so i want this reinforced and real strong once they're divided i can then take that same three inch tape and I'm not going to cut it completely. I'll cut it and then leave a mark, cut it, leave a mark, cut it, leave a mark. And then um, I'll put clear plastic tape down so it doesn't stick to this side. And then I'll lay that tape down so that it has two inches of the three inch will be onto the boot cowl with one inch overhang. And I'll just lay it up in there, maybe two, three layers. And then uh, that'll be the backing plate for the Zeus fasteners that will, uh, or the cam locks, they'll hold everything together. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap up this uh, episode about the cowling. Until I get more supplies, this is where I'm gonna end it. So, pretty excited to get this much done on it. Um, from here, we're gonna be doing body work, some reinforcement on the inside, and then dividing it into the three pieces, putting in the cam locks, and uh, getting it ready for, uh, you know, finished product. So, still need to cut out the front hole for the prop flange, and uh, it's quite a bit of work to still do, but it's been a heck of a week to get this much done, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting back at it in about four or five days. So, if you guys have made it to the end of this video, and if you like subscribing, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, give me any comments, any criticism, whatever you guys want to do about this uh, particular video. Um, pretty big project. Took a lot of time. I think I'm three and a half, four weeks into this. Um, but I'm really happy with the weight savings. And I think I can see the final product being real quality. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that I, I jumped into it and learned a lot about the carbon fiber. So uh, if you guys are thinking about doing something similar, I encourage you to go to uh, easycomposites.com uh, or at least look up Easy Composites on YouTube and take a look at uh, their tutorials on how to do this stuff. I base a lot about what I did on what 
they provide as far as tutorials, along with uh, Mike Pitty's videos on how he did his cowling on Draco. Um, I also reached out to Mike. He gave me quite a bit of advice on materials. Um, Mike, thank you for uh, hearing me on all the text messages I've been sending you lately. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm real happy I did this. So um, next video we should have, uh, if I haven't posted the airbox already, I'll get in the airbox. And then uh, we'll get these things finished up. Got to jump into the throttle um, linkage that we're going to be dealing with. And then... Uh, we're pretty close to start start the engine day, so uh, stay tuned. Yeah, the build's going to progress pretty quickly. Uh, I don't have anything else to fly, so I can't share any flying videos with you guys at this point. So I need to get this thing done so I can get back in the air. I'm already missing it. I'm missing it a lot. So let's see all my friends out flying around. This is one of my favorite times of the year to fly is in fall. The colors are great. Temperatures are fantastic. And uh, I'm missing it. So I'm working real hard to try to get this one done so I can get out there. So uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.